the I used hell. It gets blasted all to hell, right? When they turn around, they end up getting that's that's when they get on the Millennium Falcon. We still don't know what it's doing on Jakku, but that's when Ray pilots the Millennium Falcon and Finn gets in the gunner sheet gunner seat. And we know that Ray says you can do this and Finn says you can do this. Here's what's got me bugged. In a new hope, <laughs> in a new hope, when they escape the Death Star, and Han and Luke get into the the top and bottom gun chairs, right in the in the gunner seat of those two of those two guns, the physics of that don't work. No, I've always just attributed it to the physics of being in space, where there is no up or down. And, and if I'm missing something, please, by all means, I actually think the chat is up. So if you are, uh, yeah, the chat is up. If you're listening to this live right now on Spreaker and want to chime in, then chat over to me in the in the chat section and maybe you can clue me in on this. But when, when Han goes up, right, Luke goes down, when they get in the gunner seats, it's as if there's no gravity, right? Because essentially Han would be sitting straight up and Luke would be sitting straight down, in which case he'd be falling out of the seat, and I always thought in my head, okay, well, this is space physics. There is no up or down. So therefore, they can get away with it. The guns never really made a whole lot of sense to me because they'd be shooting straight up or straight down. But again, I've always just kind of, you know, blown it off and said, okay, well, it's a fantasy. They got to make this work. Here's my problem. And, I, and I'm curious about whether or not they explain this in the movie. But when, when, when Finn and Ray take off in the Falcon on Jakku, you can see it in the commercial. Finn gets in the bottom gunner seat in the belly of the Falcon. And there's pictures of this, but it's not like he's hanging there. He's just sitting there. Now, it's great if you're in space and you're going off of my idea of space physics, but how does it work when you're dealing with the gravity of a planet? Again, it's going to have to be one of those things where either we... Except the physics of it from the original movie, we just accept the physics of it in this movie. But when I saw Finn in the gunner seat of the Falcon, I went, well, wait a second, that doesn't matter. how does that work? He'd be hanging there. I mean, he'd have to be totally, he'd have to climb into the chair that would essentially be above him and then be hanging there in order to use the gun. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I need to not worry about it and just let it go. I'll do that. Let's move on. Here's the uh, audio from the latest TV trailer, and in it is an extension of when you see Poe Dameron in the pilot seat of his black um, resistance fighter X-Wing, but then he actually ends up calling out to other resistance fighters. I mean, this is a total send-up of um, both the uh, Death Star battles from A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. So here you go. Red squad, blue squad, take my lead. I'm on it. You're going your team. BB-8, hold on! Whoa! Star Wars, The Force Awakens. This film is not yet rated. Now, when she said... When she says BB-8, hold on, it's a really great shot because the Falcon is flipping and BB-8 is essentially doing somersaults inside of the Millennium Falcon while it spins. Really cool. And then you heard the woo scream from Finn, again, sitting in the gunner's seat, which doesn't make... I'm going to let it go. I said I was going to let it go, but this is me not letting it go, and I said I was going to let it go. Man, again, I keep saying it every podcast with every new bit of footage we get. Everything I've seen in this movie so far just rocks absolutely rocks now this plays right into what i want to talk about in terms of george lucas and some interviews that he's done this one i believe is from cbs and i'll play you it's about a um, two minute and 30 second uh piece that aired um on the news you know george seems to be having some kind of buyer's remorse in all of this and What's interesting to me is what he zeroes in on what he thinks they're doing to the franchise as it relates to what he wanted to do. You know, as you'll hear in the audio, George wanted this to be like a soap opera. It's, and he, he makes a comment, I believe, as such saying, you know, it's not about spaceships. This is about family. It's a soap opera. But there's something that George is missing. And maybe it's just because he's not familiar with J.J. With Abrams. 
work or the other movies he's done or maybe he is just bitter and having buyer's remorse over having to or over no longer being involved in star wars so let me play this interview here um again this came out this week and it's been appearing in various different sources okay george lucas talking about how he now has to distance himself from a galaxy far far away that he created fans this morning are less than a month from the premiere of episode seven the force awakens this is the first sequel george lucas is not intimately involved in lucas opens up to vanity fair magazine about why he will no longer direct star wars movies he says quote you go to make a movie and all you do is get criticized and it's not much fun <laughs> the force awakens is directed by jj abrams lucas will not get a say in any of the new disney owned movies Ask him about handing over the reins of the franchise he created. The issue was, ultimately, they looked at the stories and they said, we want to make something for the fans. So I said, all I wanted to do was tell a story of what happened. You know, it started here and it went there. And it's all about generations and it's about, you know, the issues of fathers and sons and grandfathers. And it's a family soap opera. I am your father. Call it space opera, but it, people don't realize it's actually a soap opera, and it's all about family problems and that. Kind of, it's not about spaceships. So they decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to go do their own thing, and so I decided, fine. But basically, I'm not going to try to. They weren't that keen to have me involved anyway. But at the same time, I said I'm not going to. If I get in there, I'm just going to cause trouble because they're not going to do what I want them to do. So. And I don't have the control to do that anymore. And all I would do is muck everything up. So I said, okay, I will go my way and I'll let them go their way. And it really does come down to a, a simple rule of life, which is when you break up with somebody, the first rule is no phone calls. The second rule, you don't go over to their house and drive by to see what they're doing. The third one is you don't show up at their coffee shop or the things what you're going to burn in. You just say, no, gone, history, I'm moving forward. <laughs> he is so right. No phone calls. No, how you doing? He is, yeah. he is one of my favorite people in yeah, the world. Yeah, for sure. So great. Speaks his mind, yes. and, and he doesn't care. And I love how he said it's really a soap, a soap opera. opera. Exactly. Yeah, because it is. Because Anakin Skywalker obviously yeah. gives birth uh -huh. to Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia, and, who you and, thought and, were in and, love and but he, are really twins. Exactly. And then, yeah. then he tries to kill his own son, Luke <laughs> Skywalker. I mean, it is. It's soap opera. It's you great. can see our full interview with George Lucas as part of our Kennedy Center. Oh, I can't Congress. tell you how much I... I love uh, how much I love hearing, um, you know, non-Star Wars geeks talk <laughs> Star Wars. And when, mean, what I mean, I love it. I mean, I don't love it at all. I find it cheesy. All right. Um, back to what George was saying. You know, we may never know. Well, I think at some point we'll know. I think at some point we'll know how much of, of what George had in mind is being used for this sequel trilogy. Some of the speculation we've heard is that George wanted the offspring, uh, the grandchildren, to be much younger uh, in this movie. And there was a fear that Disney had that we were going to get a repeat of what happened with The Phantom Menace, you know, for those that don't like The Phantom Menace and thought that Anakin was too young. From everything that we've learned so far... It would appear that if they didn't use the ideas that George used, they're still going with the family aspect of it. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy said this is, a, you know, the saga is about, you know, the Skywalker lineage. Eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll get away with away from that with the uh, with the saga movies. It came out this week. There was a great article that was posted talking about how we're going to get a new Star Wars movie every single year and that you won't be alive to see the last star wars movie right i mean there could be a point where we end up getting two star wars movies a year a lot in the same way that we're getting almost two marvel movies every year but it's it's sad and exciting at the same time to think that you know i won't be around and you won't be around to see the last star wars movie because they're going to continue making these as long as they make money and sure they're going to screw up along the way you can only have so many hits before you you don't. There will be a bad Star Wars movie, and some would even argue The Phantom Menace was a bad Star Wars movie, right? 
so all that being said, getting back to what George was saying, talking about the family aspect of it, maybe he hasn't watched a J.J. Abrams movie. From everything we've heard from the actors, um, Adam Driver and, and John Boyega and Daisy Ridley, especially Adam Driver, who seems the sort of the most eclectic of the group, seems to be the quietest person of the group. You know, he mentioned how it felt like it was a, an indie movie. He said it was all about the story, the personalities, the people. And when we get into a little bit later in the podcast, talking about what Adam Driver says about Kylo Ren, it really plays into that. And one of the reasons why I'm such a big J.J. Abrams fan, even before Star Wars came out, he's he's become one of my most popular directors. My, you know, one of my favorite directors, I should say. It's because of what he does with the characters. He is able to bring so much impact and emotion to characters in such a short period of time. I've never seen a director do it like he did. The opening sequence in the, in the Star Trek reboot, the whole sequence when they uh, come in contact with, is it, is it the Narada? The big, huge ship that travels through the, through the, uh, the black hole, right? And you see the, the young Kirk um, there. And he and his wife, right? Um, he and his, and, and his wife's pregnant. And she starts giving birth in the middle of when that ship is being attacked. And he sends her on her way. And he has to sacrifice himself on the spaceship because the autopilot's been knocked out. Man, when I saw that for the first time in theaters, they brought, I mean, actually the first couple times I saw that, it brought tears to my eyes how quickly he was able to connect those two characters that 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 husband and wife and their child being born in a matter of just minutes to provide an emotional impact. Those stories were all about the 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 family on the Star Trek Enterprise. When you look at Super Eight, love Super Eight, and I know people have their problems with it, but the the way that he was able to tell the story of those young kids, the relationship that. Um, the main protagonist in the movie ends up having with the girl and when she shows up at his house at night and comes in through the window and they sit down and having a conversation and she says to him, you know, I know I don't know you, but it feels like I've known you for a long, long time. Do you not feel that way? And he says, no, I do. I'm just a little freaked out that we're having this conversation right now. It's like, man, he tapped into exactly what it feels like to be a kid at that age experiencing liking a girl and those first feelings of love for the first time. I mean, J.J. Abrams is all about that. So maybe, I mean, and to a certain extent, even better than George Lucas. You know, which brings me to watching Attack of the Clones. Uh, again, I, 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 I love the prequel. I love the prequel trilogy. Okay, I'm an apologist for the prequels. And it's clear they were they were missed opportunities. And I think most people, even those that harp on the prequels, still know the story is there. The story is good. If they had, you know, if you had somebody like a J.J. Abrams in charge of that relationship between Anakin and Padme in Attack of the Clones that was able to really realistically show that mutual attraction there, you know, you'd really have a better impact on what happens in that movie and then obviously further in Revenge of the Sith. And you know, George is sitting back complaining, well, it's not just about vehicles. It's, you know, also it's a it's a it's a soap opera is what it is about families. It's like, well, you know what? If that's your concern, you got nothing to worry about, man. You got you got a couple of guys that are the best in the business. I mean, not only do you have a guy who wrote arguably the best Star Wars movies and well, certainly with Empire Strikes Back and Lawrence Kasdan who knows how to do characters. You look at what happened with Indiana Jones and what he was able to do there, but you also have a guy in J.J. Abrams who knows how to bring out those relationships and those feelings in movies. Mission Impossible 3, my favorite of all the Mission Impossible movies, again, I'll keep saying it, but J.J. Abrams films, at least his recent ones, have a rewatchability factor that is... Uh, unmatched by any other director, in my opinion. Every scene in his movies are 
meaningful and poignant and push things forward and are interesting in the opening scene.